So what I'm going to show you today wasn't what Geo Lewis was built for. We're going to push it beyond its limits, and that's what's going to make our results super unique and interesting. This might look complex, but it's actually really, really simple. You can get an advanced effect without having to do anything complicated with 3D models, uh, and it's all done in After Effects. This is a custom workflow I designed, so you won't find it anywhere else on YouTube. Hopefully with these tricks, it can completely change how you see geo layers and reveal possibilities that you never thought were possible. And by the end of this video, you're going to be able to create your own animated planet, uh, but not just Earth. Uh, you could even do fantasy worlds that don't exist. You could do Mars, Venus. Uh, really, the possibilities are endless. So I'm in After Effects here, and immediately you can see I have Mars in my preview window rather than the traditional uh, GeoLayers map. To make this possible, you really need to understand one thing about how GeoLayers works under the hood. If I come into a different map here, and I select something like this Universal Raster from ESRI, we can see it has a URI here, which is pointing to a WMTS server, which you can basically think as a file format for maps. So if we actually take this and we put it into a web browser, we're going to get something like this, and you can see up here in the URL bar, these are our coordinates. So if we come into the UI here, we'll see it's getting replaced with Z, X, and Y. So Z is actually not your Z axis in this case, it's your zoom, and X and Y are just your coordinates. So theoretically, if we can find a WMTS server for the map that we want, we could just plop it in here, and then GeoLayer should render it for us. There's a little bit of nuance to it, which I'll show you when we get to it, uh, but essentially that's the basic idea. So what I'm going to be using is the Mars Trek API uh, from NASA, and they're basically hosting a tile map of everything from Mars, uh, from some of the Curiosity missions and everything else. And you can see they have a lot of planets, so they have Mars, Mercury, and Venus. They also have some moons like Europa, and then they have our moon, uh, then Phobos and Titan. So I'm on the WMTS page for Mars, and I'm going to be using this Viking mosaic. Uh, we could just click here to get a preview of each one. And this is the entire planet of Mars. And it's in pretty high quality, so if you really want to zoom in on everything, uh, you can, and the quality stays pretty good. So you can also see everything here. Uh, this bounding box is going to be important later for when we put it into GeoLayers. Uh, this projection is a coordinate system, so uh, one drawback with this, since this is a different planet, it's not going to be using the same coordinate system that GeoLayers is using, so we do have to do a little bit of exploring on our own. Uh, to really find everything, every feature that we need uh, for Mars. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this WMTS endpoint right here. So I'm just going to open a notepad real quick. I'm going to copy the example link and I'm going to copy the vacuum mosaic and I'm just going to replace the URL right here all the way up to the end before it gets to this uh, versioning and do it just like this. And then when we have this zero, I'm just going to do Z, X, and Y like we saw in GeoLayers. And we do have to do this in brackets uh, so that GeoLayers actually can cut the real values into this. Okay, so now back in GeoLayers, we could just go ahead and paste this in. So we can see it looks a little weird up here. Uh, that's because we don't have our bounding box set. We're going to go ahead and rename this to be Moore's imagery. And I'm going to set the bounding box from what was on the website. So we can see it's negative 180, negative 90, 180, and 90. And for our tile size, we do have to click this WMTS capabilities. And it's going to open this big window. And we're going to come down here to where it says tiled matrix set and we're just going to copy this 256 right here so this looks a little weird uh if this happens just swap this x and y value around so for me i want to use y and then x like this and that should make it look all right so now if we zoom into this uh, it should be getting the most up-to-date data uh, from the nasa server so your attribution down here uh, you could just change it to nasa uh, I would check if you're going to use this in a project uh, with the actual attribution settings or uh, you might be able to just turn this off as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit apply on this now. And I just went ahead and hit create and you can see it went ahead and created it in this new composition. Uh, one drawback with this method is you're all going to have the world map over here. Uh, so if you actually want to find anything on the planet, uh, I find it's usually easier to go into some kind of explore, find what you want and then come back into GeoLayers and find it on the map. So like I said at the beginning, GeoLayers wasn't really designed for this. Uh, so this is just one limitation you're going to have with this method. So now I'm going to do a real quick animation on this. I'm just going to create a circle and a path. Okay, so I made this real quick animation. It's basically just a path going across half the planet. And the idea is that this is some kind of rover. It's not an exact path, but if you're making an animation like that, I'm sure you can figure it out. 
Uh, just like in a normal tile server, we're going to be using low quality images. Uh, then later when we finalize it, we're going to get the most high quality images. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. Just click finalize. Okay, so that's all done. And you can see we kind of got some uh, more high quality images of the actual moors. So now I'm going to show you how to wrap this around a planet and do these rotations inside the planet. So you'll notice, uh, try to stay zoomed out as much as possible because when we actually have this wrapped around a sphere, uh, if we zoom in, it's going to be kind of like we're zooming in on the planet. So uh, at the end, we zoom in here. So I'll, I'll show you how this looks. Uh, let's go ahead and create a new composition. Just call this main comp is fine. And we can bring in our uh, map comp. And all we essentially need to do is just come over here and take a CC sphere. We'll put the CC sphere on it. Uh, we can see it's pretty small, so let's go ahead and bring, bring the radius up on this. So you can see as our GLO's map comp moved, uh, so did our globe over here. So we can actually come back into this comp. And this is very big, so I'm just going to go ahead and scale it down. And I'm also going to move my starting position over just a little bit so we can actually see it. And once we zoom in here, this is pretty big as well, so I'm just going to bring the scale down on this, maybe something like 3. Okay, so I think it's looking a lot better. Now I'm going to take this and bring it over to the side. Using the offset, we can come up and down. So I wanted to start over here and kind of end up in the middle for us. So as we start this rotation, I want it to be all the way back in the center. And I want to bring the radius up on this as well. You can see this workflow window is super quick uh, because I'm in, not even in half quality and we're, we're able to watch the animation in real time. So I'm going to set a keyframe on this radius as well. We kind of want it to be like we're coming into the planet. And as we do this zoom in, I'm going to scale the radius along with it. You can make everything line up perfectly if you want it to, but just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to leave it like this. I'm going to show you one way to take this effect to the next level, which is you duplicate your map comp here. I'm going to add a glow effect to the one that's under it. I'm just going to bring this glow radius up. That's with the intensity and the threshold as well. So you just kind of give this a glow. And I think that makes it look pretty good, kind of like there's an atmosphere. Uh, you could of course change the colors of it as well using the A and B colors if you just swap it to A and B colors. I think a faint orange color like this might look nice. So you can see our Mars imagery is a little uh, low quality. Um, that's just how the NASA imagery is. So there's not really much we could do about that. So I hope you learned something from this. Uh, play around with it. There's a lot of maps you can find online that have WMTS tile servers. I've seen some for Lord of the Rings and other fantasy maps, as well as uh, more space maps uh, from NASA. So the opportunities are, are limitless and having all these in geo layers gives you a lot of tools to work with uh, and it's, it's very easy to do.